All right, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hey Guys. We're still talking about Onshape, but this time we're going to do it on the iPad. All right, so I'm going to call this episode uh, Onshape number 1.1, 1. 1. 1.1 iPad. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. All right, so if you haven't done it already, to download the, I, the Onshape app, you got to go to your app store and the search bars. Type in on shape. Oop, I missed the beginning part of that. On shape. Now if you just click on the on shape you're going to see that there are some other 3D CAD options that come up. You want this one. You want the one that says on shape 3D CAD. All right. So make sure you download that. Now, if you're downloading this one for the first time and you haven't signed up yet through the computer or anything like that, maybe you didn't have a chance before, or you didn't have a computer to use, uh, you can still sign up going through the app. Just remember that you are signing up for an education account and that you got to use your school email. All right. So make sure you do that. All right. All right. So let's just go ahead and open my version. Um, oop. we'll open all right so I've enabled my touch ID which is nice it makes it easy I don't have to keep typing in my password and when I get to this screen what it's gonna do it's gonna show you first of all if you look at the bottom of the screen if you look down here you'll see where it says activities documents analytics notification settings all right Activities is going to be kind of look a little bit like uh, most of your social media, like Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Does anybody use Facebook anymore? No, I don't think so. Uh, anyways, um, what's going to be on top is the most recent stuff that you've made. Um, going back further, you can see that I've done quite a number of test documents. Um, and then if we go all the way to the other side, we have settings. All right, I just want to show you a couple of things you can do. So here's where I uh, have enabled Touch ID. You can see that that's turned on. Um, I can go into my account. So under my account, you can see like, you know, your username, your nickname, things like that. Um, that's where you could change that around, you know, be appropriate. Uh, and then I can go into preferences. Now, if I messed up before, or maybe you missed it, or maybe it just like flew on by and you didn't notice, and it defaulted to inches. This is where you can change it to millimeters. We're gonna definitely go with millimeters. While you're at it, we'll leave the angle at degrees. Let's go to grams on our mass, right? That way we can check our documents later by the mass that they are to see if they were done right. All right, so that's it for that screen. All right, like I said, notifications and analytics, we're not going to really worry about. Um, let's go to documents. So under documents, you're going to see a number of options over here. It looks a lot like Google Docs. You're going to see, you know, your on shape. Those are going to be everything that you've worked on. Uh, you can go to what you've most recently opened. You can go to just what was created by you. You can also go to just what was shared with you. Um, if we get into using Teams, that might be where you find that. Um, and then public tutorials, trash, things like that. All right, so if I click on, say, my on shape, I'm just going to be in, in here. I don't have anything created yet, um, so it's not really going to give me anything. In order to start a document, down here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a plus sign that's blue. We're going to click on that plus sign. So I'm creating a new document here, and so I need to make sure I title it. For all the projects that you do for class, it's gonna be your last name, period number, I'm just gonna say period two on this one, and then um, I'm gonna call this video, right? So for each assignment, we'll give you that last name that you need to have, all right? So you can see uh, when we open this up, it looks a lot like the computer does. If you remember from the video. Over on the left-hand side, we have 
Uh, at this point, all we have is our origin, our top plane, front plane, right plane, but this is where it's going to fill in all the steps that we've taken along the way. Uh, in the center, we have the planes uh, represented in the origin. We have our view cube, and if you push down on the view cube, and um, I don't know why it's doing like that, um, we can orbit around by pushing and holding. If we do two fingers, we can pan back and forth. We can pinch. Um, we can also just tap on the view cube and we can do, you know, set views, including isometric. All right. Over here on the far right side, you'll see this little share icon. So this is where um, you can type in who else you want to share it with. You can rename the document there. We're not going to do that. Um, you can, um, we don't have anything created yet, so we don't really have much to do with that uh, yet, but here's where I can add people that I want to share it with, okay? All right, close that back up. All right, so what do we do? Just like with the computer, we're going to create a sketch tool, but you're looking at the top of the menu and you're going, but Mr. Ward, there's not all those tools that there was before. And I'm gonna say, you're right. There's only two little icons up here. One looks like a pencil. One looks like, I think that's supposed to be a sphere. Kind of looks like a basketball to me. I just always call it the basketball. I'm gonna click on that pencil. So that pencil is how we start a sketch. Now the first thing, it's giving us a big red banner on the top. And if we look over, over here on the right side where it says sketch one, we can see in red letters, it says select a sketch plane. Now I can tap on these planes in the center, but you want to be careful that you don't select another one. So I think it's just easier to select that plane from the side. So I'm going to draw on the top plane. Now that I've selected my plane, it gives me all of those sketch tools. There's no drop down list. So you can see I have line and corner rectangle, center point rectangle, uh, center point circle, on and on all the arc tools are there the polygons are there and then there's a whole bunch of constraints and stuff down here we'll get to in a later video so just like i did before with the computer i'm going to go ahead and select the center point rectangle now if you look up on the top bar now you'll see that we have a couple extra tools so highlighted what's inside that kind of bluish square is the tool that i'm using right next to it, to the left, that's where I could make this a construction rectangle. <clears throat> Remember, a construction rectangle is just there for reference. Uh, we'll go into this a little bit more later on as well, why you might wanna use a construction line or, or a construction shape. Just know that that is up there as well, and if you were to tap on it, you'd be making a construction rectangle, which you don't wanna do right now. Uh, you wanna make a regular rectangle, uh, but it's there, it's available, and it will always come up when you go into sketch. All right, so again, I want to orient my view properly. So I could come over to the view cube, and I could tap on it and hit top, and then there's a little lock button there so that as I'm dragging my finger around, um, it doesn't start changing the view as I'm drawing, or let's go back to isometric view, uh, unlock, I could come over here to these three little dots next to my top plane and hit view normal too. I suggest that you do that. That way, um, that way you're always where you want to be. Um, you could lock it then at that point, whichever way you like going. Um, it's really up to you. There's going to be a lot of things throughout this whole process with Onshape where I'm going to show you multiple ways to do the same thing and tell you it's really up to you whatever way you feel more comfortable with. As you continue along, you're gonna kind of develop your own style of working. All right, so I've got a center point rectangle picked. The first thing I need to pick, I need to select is my center point. We always wanna start on the origin point. We always wanna have something that's attached to the origin. 
That's a very important. And we'll get more into that and what you might want to have attached and not attached as we go on. But for this one, we're going to tap on the origin point. Now I've selected my center point. Now all I need to do is grab somewhere next to it and start dragging it out. And now I've made a center point rectangle. Looks pretty close to a square. I'm not going to worry about that part of it just yet. We're just going to go with this. Just going to keep it simple right now. Later on, we'll add dimensions. We'll talk about constraints, things like that when we're sketching. But just for now, let's just go through making something and making it three-dimensional. Now, there's a couple of different things that I could do at this point. I could hit the check mark next to where you see this blue box down here where it says sketch one. If I hit that, then it's just going to finish out the sketch and close the sketch. That's one way to work. The other way would be if I, because I know that I just want to extrude that, I could hit what I call the basketball, and it's only gonna give me the two possible 3D tools that I can work with with what I have, which is extrude and revolve. Now we're not doing revolve yet, so we're just gonna tap on extrude. For me, in my way of working, just going straight to the extrude makes the most sense to me, so that I'm not tapping a, a check mark on the sketch and then having to go to the 3D tools and finding extrude. I just go straight to the 3D tools and find extrude. If that's not your preferred way to work, that's okay as long as it gets the job done. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this up a little higher and see what we got going on. This looks an awful lot like what we had before with the computer. Things just are a little bit different and some things might you might think are hiding. So again, when we're doing extrude, it's most likely, it might not, there are times when it defaults to add, when it knows, when it, the computer thinks that it knows what you want to do, but you always want to check that the first thing that you have is that it's either new or add, remove or intersect, that it's doing the operation you want it to do. Because we haven't extruded anything yet, and there's nothing else there, this is obviously going to be new because it's the first extrude. If I were to add something on, and we'll do that later on, to this shape, then we want to make sure that we're clicking on add. If we're going to try to cut something away from this shape, probably want to use remove. We'll talk about intersect later. All right, again, just like before, so now it says it has one entity selected. There's only one thing that it could select, but if we had a bunch of other stuff going on there, um, and it wasn't grabbing the face that we wanted to grab, it wasn't extruding the thing that we wanted to, we could swipe this to the side and delete that selection and then select something else. But this is obviously what we want. It's the only thing that's there. So let's go back. Just like before, we've got blind, which means it's just gonna do it the distance you told it to. It's not gonna pay attention to anything that's in its way. If it cuts right through something else, it cuts right through something else. That's just how, how blind works. Uh, we have the, all the same up twos before, next, face, and part, and vertex. And then again, if we are cutting, we might be using through all. All right, so that's the way we want it. I didn't go over opposite direction uh, on the computer. That's also available. It's just an arrow in that case instead of saying that. Uh, we could extrude it instead of extruding it up. We could extrude it down and then depth. So this is where I can change my distance. Um, if for some reason what you have for dimensions is in inches and we're working in millimeters, you're gonna have to remember that there's 25.4 millimeters per inch. Um, just as in inches, it will default to one inch. In millimeters, it will default to 25 millimeters. If you want to change that, like let's say we wanted 40, you can type that in in this little thing that kind of looks a little bit like a calculator. And then when you hit the check mark, that'll lock that in. Um, we'll go over symmetric and stuff like that later. So now that I've got my, uh, my depth change and everything else was already good, I'm just going to hit the check mark. And now I've got my 3D. Uh, cube going on here. I'm going to tap on, 
on the uh, on the view cube change it to isometric now I'm in isometric I can grab and touch the screen to orbit I can use two fingers to pan back and forth I can also use two fingers to either make it smaller or spread out to make it larger um, I can also just select on the um, the face that I want to look at maybe I just want to look at the front but most of the time I just like to leave it in the isometric view until I start doing something else with it all right guys hopefully you followed along hopefully you now have your first uh, three-dimensional object created inside of uh, the app on your iPad one thing I want to remind you though is and I meant to say this before if you're working on the iPad or you're working on your iPhone which you or you know your Android phone if you're working on a mobile device like this you have to use the app you can't go through um, a web browser you can't go through Chrome or Safari or any of the other web browsers on these mobile devices it has to go through the app unlike the computer where all you need to do is have an internet con connection. You still need an internet connection for the app, but you have to use the app to be able to work with it. All right, just the way it is. Um, all right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.